With the 2014 American Godzilla film proving to be both a critical and financial adrenaline shot for the franchise, Toho figured it was a good time to bring the monster home, and announced their plans to make a Godzilla film unlike any other. To do this, they sought out Hideaki Anno, a visionary creative force within the world of Japanese animation. A massive fan of Godzilla, Anno was given the freedom to write and direct alongside his friend and longtime collaborator Shinji Higuchi, and together the two hoped to create a film with as much social and political relevance as the original while making it their own. Simply titled Shin Godzilla, it would end up being one of the most striking and profound entries in the series. The discovery of a mysteriously deserted yacht coincides with the sightings of a massive creature in Tokyo Bay. As the horrifying monster begins making its way on land, leaving devastation in its wake, the Japanese government desperately scrambles to figure out a way to stop it. Constantly evolving to every strategy they employ, the fully formed creature, dubbed Godzilla, proves invincible, threatening the existence of all life on the planet. With little hope left, the world considers the use of atomic weapons on Japan, forcing the scrappy nation to come together and figure out an alternative solution before their worst nightmares are realized. Like the original in 1984's The Return of Godzilla, Shin Godzilla is a film that speaks to the fears and tensions of its time, in this case unexpected natural disasters that leave governments at a standstill, using Godzilla as a stand-in for those fears in a way that adds a new spin to the character. And in this case, as filtered through the unique vision of Hideaki Anno, it becomes a whole different beast, a film that is so unabashedly different from anything that came before it, while at the same time honoring the spirit of not just the original, but of the franchise as a whole. Shin Godzilla lacks the sort of cheese that even the best of the franchise often couldn't avoid. Utterly earnest and sincere, the film treats an admittedly absurd scenario with a sense of realism rivaled only by the original, and is told with a hectic breakneck pace that perfectly replicates the nature of the drama that unfolds. It throws you into the deep end without a life jacket, expecting you to keep up with a huge cast of characters and an ever-escalating sequence of scenarios that recalls the horrific imagery that came out of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake. The film doesn't pull any punches, showcasing images of apocalyptic devastation few films have ever matched. It is an intense, cathartic, cinematic experience that only its nation of origin can ever truly understand. What elevates Shin Godzilla even more is that it balances this intensity with a biting satire that gives the film a sharp sense of wit. Armed with a pointed script, Anno mocks and parodies the Japanese government to great effect without ever devolving into outright caricature. The film's sprawling cast doesn't allow much depth, but every character, no matter how minor, has their quirk and is treated with a humanistic touch that allows you to empathize with them even as they make questionable decisions. Serving as the audience surrogate is Randu Yaguchi, played by Hiroki Hasegawa. A young, ambitious politician whose growing frustration with the old guard is rewarded with more responsibility as the situation with Godzilla grows more dire. Playing opposite him is Satomi Ishihara as Kyoko Ann Patterson, a lively and equally ambitious Japanese-American politician working as a liaison between the two nations. Together these two work as the film's beating heart, and are surrounded by a quirky cast of characters too massive to account for completely here. Though Ran Osugi must be singled out for his performance as Sijai Okochi, the well-meaning but clearly way in over his head Prime Minister of Japan, as does Yutaka Takenochi as Hideki Akasaka, who brings a sense of dignity and poise to the role. The most controversial aspect of the film may well be Godzilla himself. Even more so than the reviled 98 American film, Shin Godzilla alters both the origins and the look of the monster to such an extent that it will put off purists. But within the context of the film, it works, becoming one of the most disturbing movie monsters ever committed to film. Its cold dead stare combined with its grotesquely misshapen form makes for the most terrifying Godzilla yet, a creature with no conscience or remorse. He is even given some new abilities, and the moment where he first unleashes the full extent of those abilities is a moment as beautiful as it is horrifying, a visually stunning masterclass of destruction unrivaled even by big budget Hollywood films.
Technically, Shin Godzilla is a massive step forward for the franchise. It is the first Toho produced Godzilla film not to use suitmation, instead using motion capture and CGI to bring him to life. And the results are surprisingly consistent, even flawless at times. The special effects in general are a significant improvement, combining traditional model work and computer graphics into one seamless whole that very rarely ever breaks immersion. Sound design makes intentional use of the old school sound effects of the Showa era films, and the music is a combination of classic Afukabe tracks and an original score by Shiro Sagisu, which is haunting and operatic and absolutely fantastic. Shin Godzilla is that rare Godzilla movie that is so much more than just a monster movie. More than anything, at its core, it is about Japan, its place in the modern world, and its hopes and aspirations when faced against insurmountable odds. Under the expert direction of Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi, the film soars to heights reached only by the original, becoming the only entry to truly match its greatness. It is methodical, thoughtful, relentless, and most importantly, immensely entertaining and rewatchable, offering its viewers new things to appreciate about it upon every viewing. It's an astonishing work that reminds you just how versatile Godzilla as a concept and character really is, and how the monster matters as much today as it did back in 1954. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.